What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hey, my name is Libby. It's so nice to have you. I'm sitting down and I'm filming a life update and a Q&A because we are just now hitting one year of living in Houston. So I moved literally a year ago and I just feel like so much has changed and I've just grown so much and I'm just entering my adulthood, which I've shared a lot with you guys. There's nothing super crazy to really update you on. Other than I feel like where I'm at mentally with life, I feel like when I moved here last year, I was 24 turning 25 and now I'm about to turn 26 in January. I just celebrated my adoption day, which was our 25th adoption day, my twin sister and I, and I love being able to just share my story. So it's really cool that my family has been a family for 25 years now. I feel like a whole adult lately, you know, house shopping and all of that stuff is just wild and I never would have thought that I would could do that and I'm just really thankful that I'm here at this place in my life because when I first started on social media that's all I wanted I just wanted to be able to be happy and to be able to plan my life and my next goal is to be a mom and have a family and all of that good stuff and it's so cool because I've been able to share so much of my life with you guys and I don't take it for granted and so many of you guys have watched me grow up and you've grown up with me whether you found me when you were in high school when you were in college when I first started college when I graduated college There's just so many milestones that I've been able to share with you guys and I am eternally grateful Grateful to be able to do that and I'm so happy that I have my platform because I feel like I just have my core group of people that love me that support me that always check in on me I feel like the community that I do have is so so valuable and so so important to me I'm gonna get into your guys's questions because I haven't done a Q&A in a long time we're gonna start with a little Alani also very happy to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by natural cycles which is crazy and just ties into my life so well. So, JJ and I moved here on November 1st of last year. We moved from Kansas. You guys know that I am born and raised in Kansas and this was my first out of state move, which was a big one. I feel like at that time there was so much going on and now I can finally reflect and explain it to you guys. Our lease was gonna come to an end in November and I had to put in the notice like, we're not gonna renew our lease. And so that really dwindled down the amount of time that we had to find a house. I was really going back and forth between do we just stay and you know do our rent for X amount of time or not and the thing is we didn't want to like stay in Kansas and live in Kansas we didn't want to start our family in Kansas whatever it was really nerve-wracking at the time because October 10th is when I gave the notice like hey we're not gonna be resigning our lease so that's when the house hunting really began and I started packing up the house like a maniac just in case something happened because the rest of my October was really busy so I start packing up the house we still haven't found a house yet and a Jazzy had already moved here she and Cam were actually going around and finding houses for us going to look at them so we had never visited here Houston before we moved here. We put all trust in God and in them to find us the place that we were meant to be. I always say what's meant for me will not pass me by and I really had to hang on to that idea because my anxiety was skyrocketing. My cortisol level has never been that high in my life because it's just the fear of the unknown. It can just eat you up and I really had to put so much faith in like knowing that God's gonna put us wherever we're meant to be and not to doubt whatever plan is in store for us. That's not to say that I wasn't anxious and stressed out this whole time because I definitely was but that was the thing that was in the back of my head that I still remember to this day like in any circumstance whatever is meant to happen to you and wherever you're meant to be is where you're going to be that helped me to be put at ease just a little bit but fast forward a week or so it was time for me to go to Mexico which was so exciting because I was celebrating Whitney and Stefan's wedding they just had their one-year anniversary I can't believe a year has passed already but that was on October 22nd but I flew out on October 20th okay and I wanted to start a new lease like November 1st so essentially I fly out to Mexico on the 20th I'm there for three days, I believe. When I was in Mexico, that's when Cam and Ajazi found us this house. And that is when I signed the lease on it since we rented this whole first year. I fly home on like the 23rd or 24th and then it's time to start packing like crazy. I'm wrapping up couches, JJ and I are getting rid of anything that we didn't need. Then I come home, we have a lease that's going to be starting November 1st. So I had less than a week really to get prepared and packed up and to get our Cadillac ready to be picked up and shipped out here and to get movers and everything like that. If you guys watched my first video about moving, I told you that we had movers. I worked with Bellhop, which was really great, but I didn't have an address to send them to, which was the most stressful thing ever. They were like, we can't wait to move you, but we don't know where we're sending you. So it was just a lot of chaos at that time. And I'm really glad that everything worked out the way that it was supposed to. But I just remember how stressful that time was. And it took a little bit for us to really settle in and be like, oh, okay, like we actually are home. We're here. It's gonna be 
be okay. So we got here around the holidays. It was really nice because with our moving boxes, we were able to basically just throw everything in our boxes. And when we got here, since it was almost time for Thanksgiving and Christmas, we just started decorating. I just remember that being such a good time. JJ and I just experiencing being in a new place for the first time, traveling around, seeing what the city had and all of that good stuff. And just doing it with your best friend is the greatest thing ever. So that was us moving, a little recap. But this year I feel like has been not one of the most exciting years, but I will say it's been one of my most successful years and I'm really proud of that. I feel like I've made a lot of decisions that have put me in a good place and really set myself up for success. I, I just feel like that grind mentality, I had it for so long. And if you want to call it my masculine, I was in that for a long time, just trying to, you know, find security, find like stability and all of that. And that's what I was doing while growing my social media. You guys were there for it. And now it's really weird because I really compare myself to me in that time. And I think to myself, you're not doing as much. You're not working as hard. But I also have to remind myself that I put in all of that work to be able to relax at some point and to sit in the success and to sit in the goodness that I've created and that I've been blessed with. So it's a really weird thing that I've been going through this year, just being able to reflect rather than, you know, drill in all of the hard work because I've just put in so much work to get here. And even at the stage that I'm at now where I'm like, okay, well, let's go house shopping type of thing. I know that that's a luxury and I know that that's such a privilege and I definitely have imposter syndrome in that way where I'm like, I just feel like I don't deserve it, but I know that what I'm doing is for the good and it's meant to help and inspire not only myself and the people around me, but you guys as well in my entire community. So yeah. That's kind of an update on like where my mind is at with 2023. It's been a great year, I won't lie. It's been filled with so many new experiences, a lot of travel, which is super exciting, but it's also just been a, a year where I've been able to reflect and sit in all the stuff that I've been working so hard on and really wanted to create. So I've been able to really reap the benefits of it this year. And I'll be able to share more of all of that with you guys as time goes on. That's a little synopsis. I wanna get into this video and answer you guys' questions. Let us begin. You guys, I feel like I'm glowing. Oh my gosh, I put on makeup for you today. How am I liking Texas? That's one of the most common questions that you guys have asked. I honestly never would have thought that I'd be someone that's like, yay, I love Texas. And I truly separate Houston from Texas itself because I feel like it's not Texas. Houston is so cultured, it's so diverse. There's so much good food. And I just feel like it's different than a lot of the Texas cities. I've been to Dallas, I've been to Austin. I've been all around and I just feel like it's a different vibe. And honestly, we love it a lot. And I'm not a super city girl, but I love how close I am to things that I want to get to. I honestly love Houston, which is crazy to say. How did you adapt to the change, especially with working out and leaving the old life behind? I feel like it was kind of difficult because I was so used to my gym. You guys know that I loved my gym. I loved the people there. It wasn't even just the gym itself. It truly was the people. And I feel like leaving the people that I loved there was really difficult, but I ended up finding the gym that we go to really quickly after moving here. And the first thing I did was call around and ask if they allowed filming at a lot of gyms. Some of them didn't. And I was like, okay, well that just narrows it down even more but I feel like I've adapted and I kind of took on the change really well I'd say because I just started making new content and I got really used to it it was never awkward for me to be like oh I'm gonna film here because they already on that call had told me yeah you can film here I feel like it was easy to us to kind of settle in and that's when JJ started coming to the gym with me which I love the most difficult part of making the decision to move I think was not even just like deciding like we want to move because I knew that we did but ripping the band-aid off and just like cutting ties with the fact that we won't be living in Kansas and having to find something in a place that we've never been before, I think was the most difficult part. Was it a financial move? No. I mean, I know that Texas like doesn't do state income tax, but I didn't move here with the hope of like changing my finances or anything like that. I would say the cost of living is kind of similar to where we were in Kansas. I don't know. I just feel like it just opened up our options and opportunities for where we wanted to live because we kind of maxed out and lived everywhere in Kansas. I was born in Wichita. We both went to Hutch for school. Then we moved to Lawrence for KU and went to college there. And and then we just lived in the Kansas City area up until we left. So I had experienced all of Kansas. So it was just time to see something new. Are the gyms better in Houston? I would say yes, but I also haven't been to very many gyms. A lot of people go to a ton of gyms out here because I know there's like Roman Empire. There's obviously Alpha Land. I go to a private gym that's just closer to us. There's Apex, there's Believe, so many gyms. And if you're somebody that's gonna be in the city, I feel like you'll have a ton of different options. My favorite part about Texas so far, probably the culture and the food aside from like the friends that I've made here because I've just made such cool friends that live in Texas and they don't 
don't even live super close to me aside from a Jazzy because Jazzy and I pretty much moved here at the same time and she's always been my person that's here which is really nice but it wasn't like we moved here for each other it just God just set it up that way and I'm very thankful for it but I just made so many other friends and the person that asked this is actually Taylor one of my friends that I've made since moving to Texas so I love that this is a question from her as a fellow Houstonian what are your favorite spots in Houston okay I don't even leave that often to be honest I love going to the Heights I go to La La Land I go to Sweet Green where did Jerry and I go we went to like stuffed the wing place recently which was good trail burgers we haven't tried because the line is always so long we like lotus because there's good seafood there but we don't leave that often next question is is that an aura ring and it is an aura ring i love my aura ring you guys have seen me talk about this a few times i'm so excited to talk more in depth about it because natural cycles is sponsoring this portion of the video so shout out to them let me take you through my birth control experience and all of that because i feel like it'll help to kind of bring you to present day and how we got here so when i I was 16 i got on the pill for a year and that was fine but i wanted to try something else when i was playing volleyball everybody was getting the next on in their arm so i got the next on for three years it was an awful experience for me personally i just struggled with like mood and stability and i really didn't know myself and i can only say that because now i'm able to look back and be like girl whoa but the biggest thing was that i had a 90 day period where i was bleeding non-stop and i'm like so over it once that three years was up i went ahead and i got my iud i got the kylina iud which at the time was the smallest and it still might be the smallest form of hormonal IUD birth control. I had that for the last five years, 20 to 25, and I honestly had a great experience with it. I have no problems that I can really like think of at the moment that made me like get off of it. The only reason that I actually did get off of it is because it was expiring or it was just going to lose its efficacy because I was hitting that five year mark. So it was time for me to get it out. And I just feel like at this point in my life, I'm 25 now and I can foresee myself wanting to start a family sometime soon. And I also just really want wanted to learn my body off of hormonal birth control because I had been on it for nine years straight and I didn't know who I was. I don't know what 15 year old me was like because you're going through so many hormonal changes at that point. I'm like, okay, well, who am I as an adult? And I was just wanting to experience that, do my own little intuitive research on myself and see how I was feeling. So that's the reason that I got off of my hormonal birth control. And prior to getting off of it, I actually did order my aura ring, which I love so much. I got it a couple of months before I got my IUD out because I wanted to just be acclimated to it. And I wanted to know how it worked and I wanted it to learn my body prior to linking it to natural cycles so I think it was like two months before I got my IUD out that I ordered this baby and I was really just paying attention to the sleep aspect of it because I knew that when I did get my IUD out I was going to be able to link this to natural cycles. Natural cycles is the first FDA cleared birth control app. Your aura ring will communicate to natural cycles what your basal body temperature is and it will show a little blurb of that and once you exit out of that it will then show the predicted area of where you are in your cycle and if you have a red day for example you can plan or prevent pregnancy i am actually preventing pregnancy with this birth control so if i have a red day it means to abstain from sex if i have a green day then it just means that i'm okay to do whatever i want you can go get crazy you can get a little freaky whatever it may be so i feel like it's so nice to just have red light or green light you're either good to go or you need to abstain or withhold and natural cycles is 98 percent effective with perfect use and it's also 93 percent effective with typical use now i think this is one of the best investments that I've made just for myself overall because I've just been able to learn so much about myself but I just love that it's natural and it's non-invasive I've obviously done the pill and then I've done the implant in my arm and the implant IUD so I know all forms of birth control and I feel like it's nice that I've had experiences with all of them so I can just speak on them from my own personal experience I will say that I think this is my favorite one by far it really just works for me it just does so much more than tracking your cycle it tells you your fertility status you can log how you're feeling hormonal wise if you're feeling stressed that day upset angry I always know when my period is coming and I know what phase I'm in even now just because my attitude how I'll be more anxious right around the start of my period I'll be PMSing but it's nice that I'm able to log that and really be in tune with my body this is not me saying what you need to do with your body but I just wanted to share my own experience I'm so happy that I bought my aura ring and I was going to use natural cycle and they reached out to work with me and it just works so well because I just would have shared this information anyway but if you guys want to try natural cycles yourself you can go to naturalcycles.com and you can use code Libby for 15% off of your annual subscription. You'll also get a free thermometer with that. And Natural Cycles is for those who are 18 plus and it also does not protect against STIs. I will have a link in my description if you guys want to check it out for yourself, read up on it, and you can also just search all over the internet, I feel like, and find testimonials and experiences switched from using a hormonal birth control to a non-hormonal birth control such as Natural Cycles right with the Aura Ring. Thank you so much Natural Cycles for sponsoring this portion of the video. Back to your guys' other question. Oh my gosh, what do I put in my hair? Okay, 
my favorite line right now is we dad I've used that for years I use it to style my hair I really like the day styling cream it just smells so good and it's a good little light conditioner to help slick my hair down otherwise I love pattern beauty to just use in the shower daily as a good little co-wash or to wash my hair I've also been on my Olaplex game which is so nice as well as k18 I just feel like taking care of my hair health especially with having like colored hair it just it makes a big difference when you don't use as much heat on it and you really take care of using hair mask and you nurture it oh my gosh okay somebody asked a question about getting started on social media and knowing what to post online I feel like I entered social media when I was so young if you guys go to the hashtag mad libbers the real ones already know and they've already searched that up but I've been on social media for so long and I do believe that it genuinely raised me to an extent the thing about being on social media is changed so much since I first got on it and I love social media I just love sharing my life sharing my routines and who I am as a person with you guys I love to be that friend online to you who is just authentic and pushes you to be your best self and to be your authentic self I don't know I just don't like to box myself in so I just like to share the things that are important to me such as my life my fitness and my routines and my dog of course like Bronx I think the thing that people struggle with most on social media is the idea that people are going to judge you and that's bound to happen to be honest I wish I could put it in an easier way. The thing is you have to allow people to develop an opinion of you and that comes with judgment. That means you're going to be judged whether it is for the good or for the non-good. Whether you fall in favor of somebody or you don't, that's totally okay. But you have to let people develop an opinion of you in order for them to stick around. People don't just stick around for pictures anymore. They don't just want to see what you look like when you're posed. They want to see your personality. They want to see how you laugh. They want to see you interact with other people and they want to see you just be you. And I think right now on social media, we're all just searching for something that that feels like a friend online and I feel like I've, I've been that and I hope that I can continue to be that for my audience because that's just how I've always showed up but knowing what to post it just comes down to how do you want to share your story how do you want to share yourself do you want to do long form content like here on YouTube do you want to do short form content just and being on TikTok. It just depends how you wanna share it. You don't have to have the most intense setup and the greatest camera. I started my YouTube with my iPhone. I filmed and edited my first video on this phone. Here we are now. Let, one second, one second. Here we are now, okay? All from my very first video. Just from posting my first video, I somehow have over 100,000 people that have showed up for me here and 400,000 plus on each of my TikTok and my Instagram. Like, and trust me, I know the idea of somebody judging you is so daunting, but that's how you weed out the people that aren't for you and you find the people that are for you. I always say that people flock to what they relate to and if they relate to you, they will stick around just like you guys have. What's my lock screen photo? This is so funny. All right, so it is me and Mason at the pumpkin patch. You guys know Mason is my niece. All of my lock screens are me and Mason somehow. It's so funny. Did you know you always wanted to be an influencer. I wouldn't say so because when I first started social media, like I said, I was so young and being an influencer really wasn't even a thing. I have just always loved being online. I've always loved the internet. I feel like I was like raised by the internet literally. When I first started my Instagram, it was never about, oh my gosh, I want to be the biggest influencer ever. I really just started by sharing my workouts and I just wanted to see the progress that I would make because when I first started working out, I was like 35 pounds lighter than I am now and I'm just so proud of how far I've come. That's that's the reason that I started posting my workouts anyways to see like what can the progress look like and here we are now not only did I make progress in the gym but just like growing up and so many life experiences that I've been able to share and document on social media I never plan to be an influencer I don't really know if I can consider myself one I just want to make a good impact on people and I want people to find joy and find peace when they come to my accounts because I just want to be that serenity that somebody can come to and be their comfort person and my favorite thing is when I get comments from people saying you're my comfort creator because I have those myself and it just means so much that I can bring that type of joy and comfort and just like bliss to somebody over the screen. Okay, somebody asked how many children do I have? The ones I've seen are adorable. Okay, I feel like a lot of people think that I have kids and I don't. For sure, people think that Mason is my daughter. That's my twin sister's daughter. Maybe that's why she looks so much like me and I like to claim her as my own. And then we also have like family friends who are very close to us that have kids. And we're just very involved in our friends' lives as well as the kids that come with those families and friends. We're just involved in their lives as well. But I currently don't have any human babies. I can't wait for the day that I do. I've seen you live in three houses now. Is it ever sad to close up your home for the last time? Oh my gosh, it's absolutely really, really hard to close up. Like just a chapter, I feel like the last time you close that door is kind of tears at your heartstrings because I feel like it's like Miley Cyrus when she's like Hannah Montana and she's closing off filming Hannah Montana and flashes back to all of the memories that they made there. And I just feel like that's how it is. Whether you're, you know, leaving home for the first time and you're going to college or you've been in your first apartment for so long and you've just built so many memories, just 
while to do that but i think one thing i'm really thankful for is that i've had jj by my side in every place that i've lived and it's really nice to know that you're like your partners and you're literally doing this together you're closing up the door for the last time together and going to open a new door at a new house with each other but it's definitely like a tearjerker and it's hard because the fear of uncertainty is so real and you don't know what's going to come with your next adventure or where you live next but you can only hope for the best and i feel like that's just what's happened for us but i definitely would say it's hard it's definitely hard oh my gosh which alani new flavor is my fave i love juicy peach but i also love red and blue slush the minis that i have are only red slush and juicy peach Kimmade, which i call skimberly's skimmade i love that one as well i like the super super fruity sweet ones but if you guys want to get some alani use code libby i may have ran out of space on my sd card but i'm not done talking i'm so sorry i'm so sorry what would you give to someone in their 20s struggling with anxiety? A uh, friend, I'm 25 and I'm in my 20s and I, stu I struggle with anxiety every single day. Yesterday I had a really tough time to be honest and I definitely need to talk more in depth about just like anxiety and my mental health lately because I feel like it's just been a hard time oddly enough um, and it's really annoying when you don't have answers as to why and I know anybody that struggles with anxiety and depression can attest to the fact that sometimes you just feel anxious or you just feel depressed and you want a reason why but you can't find like almost you can't find a good enough reason it's really frustrating because that's valid in itself and having a poor mental health day is so valid but i think it's just like being the person experiencing it. it's frustrating when you can't pinpoint like this is exactly why i'm struggling right now but if you are struggling with anxiety whether you're in your 20s or not just know that it will pass i promise you that and my biggest advice is to get really in tune with yourself and for me that means that i'm gonna sit down and journal i'm gonna literally open my bible i'm going to do something that's going to distract me from whatever is making me anxious and from all the things in the outside world that i could focus on that my mind is trying to cover going a million miles a minute and I try to just focus in on the moment that I'm in whether that is writing a to-do list for tomorrow writing a list of gratitude things that I'm really thankful for just writing down anything I'm just such a visual person and I'm very tactile in that way where sometimes I just need my alone time and if that means I need to go take a nap I'm taking a nap like <gasps> When you need to just escape the world and escape your mind sometimes, taking a nap is the way to retreat. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Um, I did try to get medicated for my anxiety and depression and ADHD. And I actually stopped the medication like Zoloft and, and Adderall. I didn't like the side effects that came with it, but medication is always an option. And I that's not to say that I won't revisit it at some time. I will say moving, moving to a hot place. And I knew my seasonal depression that's what was really bad for me. I knew that moving somewhere where the sun was out more and it was warmer would help me and I can say that it definitely did. I know it's not possible for a lot of people to just up and move, but speak to yourself and write down what you want to do, what your goals are. Try to focus on you in that very moment when you're experiencing so much anxiety. What's something that brings you comfort? Is it watching a TV show? Is it trying to plan out your life and just having your ideas down on paper? How is no IUD going? It is going so well. Honestly, okay, let me break it down. So having no IUD, I will say like when I got off of my birth control, I experienced so much like brain fog and I think it was just the transition of getting all of that out of my body. I think I'm still going through it because I'm not too far out from when I got my IUD taken out. Um, but I had so much brain fog. I was dissociating all day. I had no memory. This is not to scare anybody, but this is just my own personal experience. I know that I'm on the other side of it now so I can speak on it. I also just felt like I withered away. And I know I'm a small person, but I felt like before getting my IUD out, I like carried more weight and maybe it was just more fluid because when I got it out, I felt like the Sahara Desert. Like I got sucked up and dried out and my body just felt very tiny. And it was really, really weird and I feel like that's the first time that I really experienced a big bout of like body dysmorphia because I it's not something that I've struggled a ton with um especially in the recent years but it's been a weird weird time but I feel like now after supplementing and obviously being further out things are regulating more I've been able to kind of reflect and be like oh okay like that was a moment that was a moment it was something overall I will say that it's going really well I love being able to track my cycle naturally and I love that my natural cycles app knows me I think it's really cool oh my gosh my fave song on Rod's new album Okay, if you guys don't know, I love Rod Wave and JJ signed to him. On his new album, Nostalgia, we like Long Journey, Call Your Friends, Great Gatsby, Boys Don't Cry. I don't know. I feel like I like a lot of them. I'm just a Rod Wave fan though. Somebody asked what happened to Ed. Mr. Ed was my gym grandpa back in Kansas. Nothing happened to him as far as I know. I miss him so much. He's just back in Kansas and I moved to Texas so I don't get to see him all that often. Okay, I'm considering moving away from home and I'm not sure where to move. How'd you know where? I am not the girl for this because I didn't know where. I did not know where. Where we had no plans to move to Houston, Texas. We were actually looking more at Florida and I still believe like we will end in Florida, but 
nothing like called to me about Texas or Houston. It just happened. I feel like it was just like a let's just full send it type of thing and sometimes you have to go through life like that and say you know what whatever happens happens and i feel like this is where we're meant to be at this point in our lives which is kind of cool it just feels very we're exactly where we're supposed to be i kind of just let go and let god to be honest you and jj talk about marriage anytime soon yes and jj and i would get married yesterday but i feel like we also just did a lot of growing up and now we're finally at that point in our lives and in our relationship where we're like okay let's be married let's get together but I do think we were just young when we met and we had so much life to experience together I want nothing more than to be married to that man. I I just have no rush on it I know that we'll probably get engaged soon, which is exciting I don't know when though. Like we have gone and lived the rings, which I've never said that in a video video i've said it like in a live but i've never just like said it and i just feel like social media has this idea of how things are supposed to be and i've never been one to kind of fall for that and do exactly what social media makes it seem like you need to do i think that it's important especially when your life is on social media to still have a private life and live that to the fullest extent and it's just a blessing that i'm able to share those milestones and that stuff with you guys but i just feel like i've always kept my relationship pretty private you guys know of jj of course he's not a secret he's just private something that'll happen in the future any special plan or goal you're working towards gosh i feel like this year has been a lot of planting and you know i feel like next year is going to be a lot of harvesting if that makes sense i feel like i've just sown my seeds of a lot of things this year and in terms of just like reaching goals of providing and being able to kind of reap the benefits and you know sit in the success so there's not any like massive goals i feel like other than i want to buy a house i just feel like i've done a lot of the groundwork and setting myself up for the future and that's it's been really important to me this year especially especially because i'm turning 26 at the beginning of next year and i'm like oh my gosh that's true adulthood this was a year of sowing my seeds for sure and i think that all of that will like come to harvest next year will gymshark ever do a meet and greet in the midwest i hope so i would be there immediately i love the midwest that's where i'm from it's my home are you wanting a family in the next five years definitely definitely i want a family so badly i really do you guys know this i've said this so many times like my dream and my goal in life is to be a mom and to have a family i don't know when that'll be god willing but i can't wait for that time in my life um have i changed doctors yet oh my gosh you guys know that i literally procrastinated this for so long i haven't changed doctors yet i will at the, i will next year you gotta follow up with me next year sometime my zodiac sign so i know nothing about zodiac signs and astrology but i know to answer i'm a double aquarius gemini i don't know what that means but i know that i've looked it up enough to tell people that that's what it is but tell me what that means like tell me Tell me. Tell me. I want to know. How long have you been with your boyfriend and how did you meet? Jaja and I just hit the seven year mark, which is wild. I can't believe we've been together for so long. We just lived so much life and it's wild. Um, but we met in community college and we were in the same biology class. What was your biggest pinch me moment? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I feel like I've had a lot. Probably when I became a first generation college graduate and I got my two degrees, that was a big pinch me moment. That was like really big for me. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie, getting my 100,000 subscriber plaque, that was a huge thing for me. It made me feel like, wow, I've just been putting in so much work over the last few years and it finally has come to this and I'm so happy. I just love being able to share my life with you guys. I think like the house journey, that's really crazy that I'm even in the position where I can look at houses and I'm not even like confined to houses i can look at do you know what i mean like i do have a lot of flexibility which is crazy and i don't know i feel like that is something that i'm experiencing right now because it's very recent i've even like started this journey and i haven't talked about it at all i kind of want to be more open about just like all of those changes and transitions because when we moved here i didn't speak about it until we literally got here this is just a new journey and like buying a house building a house whatever it may be i feel like i'm experiencing that pinch me moment right now amazing and i'm so proud and so happy but being this person in my life where i'm really young and i'm able to do this it feels lone it's like lonely almost because not many people experience this and it's all for the good and it's all a blessing but when people around you obviously aren't in the same boat as you it does feel a little lonely i'm like hitting those crazy milestones at a young age when other people can't relate to you especially like i don't know other people in my life just don't relate to where i'm at and i don't take that for granted at all that's the one thing i feel like was really pinched me recently i feel like your lips are looking juicy can i ask if it's a plumper or if it's work oh my god this is my lips currently slay so i have 0.5 milliliters or half a syringe i might have one full syringe now because i've gone twice well i've gone three times so i do have lip filler so i have a lip flip i think it dissolves 
on its own at some point. Anyway, that's all I get is like 0.5 at a time type of thing. And then I fix my gummy smile so you guys know, like if you look at little videos, you could see that my gums would show every time I smile, but now, they don't, and you can see like my, my teeth just look a lot more straight across, which I love. Otherwise, I have disport in my forehead, which I can still move my eyebrows and everything and be just as expressive. I am so expressive and I had baby five nines, but that wears off eventually. And then, yeah, that's it. Just a little Botox disport and my lips. But I love my lips. They just are always so swollen and bruised when I get them done. Oh my gosh, like I don't show my face. But I'm pro doing what you want. Okay, slay! What's been the most exciting event for you as an influencer? Actual event, I would say either the New York Gymshark pop-up. It was a smaller event, but that's when they printed out that life-size photo of me and the Vital, which was crazy. When I got to be the face of the Vital Seamless campaign and Vital Neutrals, that was super exciting for me. Event-wise, I would say just like Gymshark events are where it's at. I don't know, I think just being able to meet people in person and when people see me in person they're like are you Libby and I'm like oh yes do you know me and everybody's just so kind so just being able to see people off screen and in real life is really really cool to me I feel like that's the end of the Q&A that's a lot of the questions I feel like it was centered around moving being in Houston family babies marriage my freaking aura ring coming off of birth control and all of that good stuff but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I love being able to sit down with you guys and just have kind of like heart-to-heart one-on-ones where I can talk more in depth about things it just feels very nice and it feels very homey and like friendly. I feel like I'm just talking to my friends, which is awesome. If you guys want to check out Natural Cycles, you can go to the link in my description and use code Libby for 15% off. Thank you so much to Natural Cycles for sponsoring this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up so I know that you did. Let me know what other videos you guys want to see from me because I need to be on it and I'm really ready for Vlogmas, I think. Don't forget to subscribe so you guys don't miss a video with me and you can keep up with me every single day on Instagram and TikTok at Libby Christensen. And I will talk to you guys later.